Michelle Smith, and I'm the team lead for the ANC Dance Ministry. I got some good news. This month on April 30th at 6.30, we're having open call auditions. So if you're gifted in the area of dance ministry, liturgical dance, praise dance, we would love to see you at the open call auditions. But this is not only for dance. This open call is for my ministry. So if that's your area, we'd love to see you there. Now, open call is for ages 21 and up. If you're younger than 21, we still want you a part of the team. So you can join that also. For more information, email nsmith at ancfairfield.com. So for more information, email nsmith at ancfairfield.com. Now this is the thing. You got to know your right foot from your left foot and you can't have two left feet. See you there. 2024 Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International Conference in the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana, July 9th through the 11th. Join presiding Bishop Joseph W. and Dr. Stephanie Walker III and founder and co-founder Bishop Paul S. and Deborah B. Morton, along with Bishop Jonathan Woods Sr., Elder Jasmine M. Robinson, Bishop William Murphy III, Dr. Linda Willis, Bishop Bobby L. McCarter, Sr., Pastor John Hanna, Consecration Service with Founder Bishop Paul S. Morton, and our Worship Encounter with International Presiding Bishop Joseph W. Walker III at the New Orleans Convention Center. Visit fullgospelconference.org today. Greetings, All Nations family. I'm Shawna Hogan, Ministry Head of our Fellowship Relations Ministry. I want each and every one of you to get excited with me for our upcoming Full Gospel International Conference, taking place July 9th through 11th in New Orleans, Louisiana. Family, our bishop is opening up the very first day, so I want to see you in New Orleans with me. We have a bus going to New Orleans. We have hotel accommodations available, and if you have any questions about anything, you can see me at any service or email is hogan at ancfairfield.com i can't wait to see each and every one of you in new orleans louisiana well good evening anc that was a little loud Good evening, ANC. Come on, y'all. Let's make some noise. Let's get excited about being in the house of the Lord. Come on. The Bible says, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I'll be grateful unto him and I'll bless his name. For the Lord is good. Anybody know the Lord is good in here? Has he been good to anybody today? Has he been good to you all week long? Has he brought you from a mighty long way? Come on, y'all can make a little bit more noise than that. For the man that saved your soul, for the man that delivered you, for the man that brought you out, you can be a little bit more hyped than that. If that was for me, that would be okay. But we're talking about Jesus tonight. We're talking about the Savior. We're talking about the Master. Anybody get excited about the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. We came to praise and magnify Him. We came to lift Him up tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, we want to welcome you out to our Wednesday night experience. Anybody glad to be in the house? Come on, make some noise one more time. Hallelujah. Do we have any first-time visitors in the house with us on tonight? Any first-time visitors? Praise the Lord. Well, we all family. Can we clap our hands and celebrate that tonight? Listen, if you are a first-time visitor watching us online, if you could text FTV to the number that appears on your screen. Again, that is FTV to the number that appears on your screen. Listen, we finna get ready to go higher, family. Y'all ready? Come on, y'all. It's time for intercessory prayer. Let's go, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get in a posture of prayer. I know sometimes we may be tried on every side and that, you know, sometimes it's hard for us to come into the house of the Lord in the middle of the week just to give God some praise. But I dare you to give God some praise. I dare you to make an altar where you are. I dare you to lift up your voice and give God what is due. Clap your hands. Let him know that.
that you love him. Let him know that you appreciate him. Let him know that I thank you for allowing me to make it thus far. I thank you for allowing me to make it into the house of the Lord tonight. Without any incidents and accidents, my child, okay, my mama, okay, my brother, okay, my sister, okay, my granny, okay. So, Lord, we thank you on tonight. We honor you on tonight. Let's give God what is due. Don't stop praising him. Make an altar where you are. God been too good to you. You got a shelter you can go to. You have food you can eat. You have reliable transportation. You have a job.
And I want you to I want you to shake the heavens to let God know we're ready to receive our next one, two, three. Come on. 
come on, open your mouth and shout in here. You've been through too much to be quiet. Open your mouth and shout in here. Shout through your pain. Shout through your tears. Shout through the nose. Shout through the denials. Come on, open your mouth and shout. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's offering time. Come on, let's celebrate God. It's offering time. While you're clapping, let's thank God that our lead pastor is back in the great city of Fairfield. He's with us. Bishop Jonathan Elwood, see you. Come on, make some noise. Boy, I start watching him preach Sunday, and I say, he's going to make me come get him because he needs to know where his church is, and it's not in Chicago. <laughs> But we thank God that he left us in good hands. Let's thank God for our 9 a.m. speaker, Elder Woods. Come on, make some noise. Come on, make some noise. And can y'all make some noise for the greatest co-pastor in the world? Come on, come on, come on. Listen, God is doing some amazing things at All Nations Church. And you want to be a part of what God's doing. So I'm going to ask everybody, get a seed in your hand. Let's put seed in the ground for what God is about to do. We're excited to hear from our bishop here momentarily. We know that there is a word from the Lord, and we're excited to hear that. Anybody enjoyed the um, 6 a.m. lift on Tuesday? Make some noise if you enjoyed our bishop. Listen, there are many ways that you can sow. You can text ANC Give to the number on the screen. You can cash up, dollar sign, ANC Fairfield, Alabama. Put your name in a memo, or you can download our app. Also, if you're in person, our ushers are walking around now with tied the envelopes. You can sow through our envelope, or you just put the cash in the bucket. It's going to spin the same way. Amen in Jesus' name. So we thank God for you. Virtual church, please get on this. We won't see it in the ground. God is doing some amazing things. Do me a favor. Lift that seat up in the air, your smart devices, whatever you're sewing with. Let's pray. Kind Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you that you are God over our life. We thank you, God, that you rule God and you still reign. We ask that you will bless every seed 100 fold, God. We love you, Lord, and we adore you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. together for the Lord. He's a wonderful God. He's a great Savior. Amen. Come on, let's really praise Jesus tonight. Let's really give him something that's worthy of his praise, worthy of his goodness. Hallelujah. God bless you. I appreciate um, all of you for being here tonight. We serve a mighty God. We serve a wonderful God, and I think we all would agree he's faithful, <clears throat> and I believe that somebody tonight, you have a miracle with your name on it. Uh, you, can, you never go through hardships and challenges without God rewarding you for your, for your sacrifices, so... Uh, the Bible says they that have sown in tears are going to reap in joy. Somebody ought to lay hands on yourself and say, the best is yet to come for me. Hallelujah. I am so thankful to be back in the house of God. I, I miss you guys on Sunday. I was watching service with my arms folded saying, how dare they have good time without me? How dare they? praise God without me. Uh, I want to just give a shout out to my uh, brother, Elder Johnny Lee Woods. The man preached. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for him. He preached in the nine o'clock service. I appreciate the God in him and 
how God is raising him up. We thank God for him and certainly to my bride, y'all. This. I said, she going to mess around and get me to come back early. Because not only did she preach, she looked so good doing it. I said, boy, that's a good-looking woman right there. But God is elevating her, and there's nobody but the Lord. And we give God praise for you. I love you so much. Um, Amen. We have the best executive pastor in the world. He's a gift. Appreciate him. And uh, tomorrow... Uh, he's going to be launching a Bible study entitled The Blueprint in Gadsden, Alabama. So for those of you that are watching us from Gadsden, the information is up on his page. Some nice new pictures up. And, uh, <laughs> Lord, we're going to have to work hard to keep him humble now, I tell you. But uh, uh, Elder Kenneth Madden is such a blessing, and we give honor and deference to his beautiful wife who is not here tonight. ANC, I want to thank all of you for how you serve. Uh, I appreciate you for your commitment to this great house and to the Lord. Um, We are blessed beyond measure. And uh, I appreciate God for all of you for your dedication, your commitment, and, and just all that God is doing in this house. It's the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. And I can't wait to see what's next for us individually and corporately. Um, I want us to be reminded, have y'all, I know y'all been eating sweets all week, haven't you? I see it on your face. You know, when you eat sweets, your cheeks get puffy. Um, (laughs) Well, I'm trying to hang in there. I really am. Yeah, I got a race to run. I got some things to do. I got some clothes to wear that I can't wear right now that I'm really holding on to before I take him to the goodwill. But um, I want us to be uh, reminded of, y'all, Monday night reach, two people got the Holy Ghost Monday night. Amen. One of them was my daughter, Jada. And Jeremiah, is Jeremiah here? Jeremiah received the Holy Ghost Monday night. Make some noise for him. He... I didn't tell them they had it. They said it on their own. God is so good. He'll fill you too. You know you've been filled. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And there is more. Come on, somebody praise him like you know it. Oh, my God. Glory, 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 glory. He's pouring out his spirit. He's pouring out his spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to go. I feel mighty churchy right now. Oh, Lord. You may be seated. Let's go. We'll be stuck here all night. Got to go. Please get registered if you haven't registered for the full gospel conference. I ask you to do that. We have 48 people that have registered, and I thank God for that. Amen. There are 30 seats left on the bus, 12 uh, rooms left. I don't know if they're still left. I thought I saw Sister Shava come in, but... um, Okay, she, she's upset. She had to sit close to her husband tonight, I guess. And she, she's sitting by her boo in the sound system. Y'all can't hold hands. Um, amen. Thank y'all for that. Y'all see that note on the screen? Put it on the, put it on media world, too. They don't need to walk at home too much. But, uh, y'all, Listen. We have a great men's director here at our church, Minister Anthony Jeffries. (laughs) 
That's my guy. I love him so much. And on April the 27th, our men, they are sponsoring and hosting here at ANC a career fair. And it's going to be right here on campus. For more info, see the man in the black shirt. That's my guy. Um, tonight we're going to go to Acts chapter 8. We, we um, and welcome to all of our visitors that are here. We're so glad to have you on tonight. I want to go to Acts chapter 8, and um, we're going to just peruse the scripture tonight. I hope you've been blessed by um, this series. We're going through the book of Acts, and we've made it to chapter number 8. We know in the summation and the commencement of chapter 7, uh, it was the stoning of Stephen. It ended beautifully. Uh, the Bible says that Stephen cried with a loud voice, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And the, then he cried out and said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. So even in, in death, he suffered a painful death, but it was uh, similar uh, to the death on the cross when Jesus was dying, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen forgave his offenders. And I want you to know tonight that you will never advance far if you don't learn to forgive. Uh, we live in a grudge-holding generation. Boy, I tell you, saints will speak in tongues and not speak. Uh, Y'all, they go help me here. The saints, we are some of the most cutting off folks. We are hard in our hearts. We are just like the Pharisees. Uh, some of y'all got a mad spirit tonight, but you're going to get glad before I leave. Amen. And you're going to smile because, you know, you, 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 you know, a smile makes you look better. You look better. Ain't that what Kirk Franklin said? You look better when you smile. But I want to go to verse number one. Uh, tonight, let's unpack Acts chapter 8. It says, and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Now, I want to stop right there because what we're learning here is that Saul, uh, who we're going to find, is going to become Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ. He did not stone Stephen, but he was in agreement with those who stoned him. And I want to tell the church tonight, we have to be careful uh, who we agree with. Uh, because uh, consent is collaboration. Uh, you didn't throw the stone, but you was glad that somebody threw one. You know, we always have to check our hearts to make sure our heart, keep your heart free. Don't agree with people just because they say certain things. and Don't agree with everything the government does. Y'all, you know, it, it's really difficult now to vote straight just one party. Uh, I think it's very critical that we watch the news, we pray, and we really get uh, context from God uh, regarding what politicians we're going to vote for. Because when you check that box... You are consenting to some things that may be antithetical to our faith. We have to be very, uh, uh, very clear in what we are uh, consenting to. And another aspect of consenting is hitting the like button. Um, for those that hit the like button on Facebook and Instagram and had you ever, have you ever had to unlike something after you prayed about it and the Holy Spirit said, go and take your name off of that? Your name doesn't need to be on it, y'all. You can't like everybody's new house because you don't know how they got it. And then I need to know if I hit like on it, who else living in there? Uh, because I might not agree with the living arrangements. We just have to be careful about what we consent to, all right? 
And it says, and at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. This is, uh, this is around probably 68 A.D., uh, when the vanquishing of the Jerusalem church began to take place, we do know that the Holy Spirit fell in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is, uh, it is called the habitation of peace. Uh, it is the epicenter of religion. Uh, Jesus uh, was crucified in Jerusalem, and the Holy Ghost came in Jerusalem, and the saints were there. Now, we know that the Bible says that the Holy Ghost, which was the promise of the Father, was to them and to their children. And then he says, all that are far off and as many as the Lord our God shall call. One particular scripture says it was supposed to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. But this particular church was, was under the same spill that we are today. We, we are a church that struggles, and I'm not talking about ANC, but I'm talking about the kingdom at large. We struggle with convenience. We love to be convenience. And if we don't go through anything or if the Lord don't pressure us, we'll stay in one space and carry the gospel nowhere. Um, but look what happened. How many of you know God will use problems in order to get you to birth out your ministry? And so they were per persecuted because the whole objective of this is the devil is doing the persecution, but God is using the devil in order to get them to spread the gospel outside of Jerusalem. He persecuted them there. Now look at this thing here uh, in, in the Bible says, and they were all scattered. You see that? If they never would have been persecuted, they never would have scattered. And if they never would have scattered, the, the gospel never would have made it to the United States of America. And the, because of the scattering, it went into uh, Asia Minor. Because of the scattering, it went into India. Because of the scattering, it went into Italy. Because of the scattering, now we have uh, the word, the message that there's a Savior that, that, that died and rose for us from the grave. And so the scattering is important. The Bible says, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Now, at this particular time, the saints are running for their lives because this persecution was all inclusive of hangings, uh, scourgings, beatings. They, uh, in one uh, theologian says that uh, they were put in arenas and lions were loosed on them and they mauled them and they ate them all because of their faith. Many of us today are so sensitive Oh, we get on the phone and tell everybody, can you believe that they're talking about me? <laughs> Honey, that's petty. These people had real problems, real issues. They were, their lives were threatened. They were whipped. You know, they would go to the houses and they'd say, hey, you believe in Jesus Christ? Yeah, come on. Get the whip out. Let's beat her. Let's beat him. Let's beat him until they die. They were hanged. How many of us today uh, know that we are so convinced that Jesus is Lord that we're willing to die for our faith? It's easy to say, but what if you actually had to go through it? Amen. And we ought to be thankful. The greatest praises ought to be in the United States of America. Uh, we should be the most radical. We should be the most faithful. We should be the most dedicated. In fact, all of us should be deeply entrenched as it relates to being interested in mission work uh, because mission work is when we begin to cross over to the other side and go into uh, foreign lands. My wife and I are going to Rwanda in uh, August uh, on a mission trip. We're going. I've been to El Salvador, and I've seen people serving God who live in huts, uh, and the floor is just dirt. And they have one bedroom with seven kids, and they're still saying, well, we love the Lord, which lets me know that real joy ain't got nothing to do with money, y'all. <laughs> oh, y'all going to shut me down tonight. Real joy ain't got nothing to do with what's going on in your life. He said, I'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. He said in Philippians 4, I'll give you a peace. That will surpass your own understanding. Your cognitive calculation will not be able to conceive how you got peace when everything around you is disturbed. And so you ought to tell your neighbor, I want that kind of joy. 
and peace. And so it says, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. They didn't start singing another one bites the dust. <laughs> they were sad and by the death of Stephen. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house. Look at this. Healing men and women committed to them to prison. Now, one of the things that we must take note of in this story is that everything that Saul did, he did it because he thought he was doing the will of God. You know, there are some people who will kill you and hurt you in the name of the Lord. And they will sincerely do it thinking that they're doing the right thing. Now, it says he made havoc of the church. He got people, uh, men and women, and committed them to prison. Therefore, they, were, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere. Now, here's the good news. In verse number four, the problems led to the promotion of the gospel. It says, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. The beauty of this, ladies and gentlemen, is that when it's in you, you can't shut it down, even when things are going crazy around you. Oh, I feel God in this place. Hallelujah. Uh, the, the old folks said, I said I wouldn't tell nobody. But it, ha has anyone in here ever witnessed to somebody? Wow, your life was going crazy. Hallelujah. You were grieving, but you were comforting someone else that was grieving. Come on here. You were discouraged, but you were encouraging somebody else that was discouraged. You needed prayer, but you were praying for somebody. Else. It's just in you. And, and no matter how much you try to shut it down, it all, have you ever come to church and said, I'm not going to clap my hands tonight? No, I'm not. But the music started playing and the praises started going up and you started thinking about the goodness of Jesus and you was trying to fold your arm, but your elbows started moving. And before you know it, you was lifting your hands and you were praising God. That's when you know you got it on the inside. The Bible says they went everywhere preaching the word. Our lives are on the line, but let's tell them the good news. Now let's go to verse number five. It said, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now we know that Stephen was in the last chapter. Now Philip is being raised up. Both of them emerged from chapter number six uh, when the church chose the seven. These men were initially chosen to help the apostles take care of the business of the church. But guys, this is what we learn from this particular story is that we need people that handle business, but they have the Holy Ghost. Because business becomes their secondary focus. Doing ministry becomes their primary focus. Y'all, we got church splits all over the world. We've got people in the church. Uh, I've went and preached. I've had pastors that didn't have the courage to, to talk to their deacons. And so they call me and they say, Pastor Woods, will you come into my church and preach? I'm going through a great deal, a deal of dif difficulty in my church. And I need you to preach, especially about my deacons. And I'll go over there, and I don't preach about the deacons. I go and preach the word of God. Because, ladies and gentlemen, you will, if you let the devil take over your church, he will. You got to be a gospel gangster. If you let the devil take over your house, he will. You got to be a gospel gangster. Come on here. I mean, I believe I have two people that will say, I ain't going to sit in my house and cry about a devil. When I have the anointing, when I have the Holy Ghost, and when I got a pistol. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. I got three things that I need, and each one of them will work for me. I, I want to hear the folks shout tonight that will say, I ain't scared of the devil. He will not depress me in my house. He will not have me scared in my house. He will not have me scared of my children. He will not have me scared of nothing. Though a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, it will not come nigh unto me. 
It says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached preached Christ unto them. Y'all, we got to preach Jesus because Jesus is the answer. Christ is the answer. Today, we, we have created a celebrity culture in the church. So now, people come to church looking for celebrities. They don't look for Christ. You can tell because when they don't get what they want from the celebrity, they get an attitude. But when it's about Christ, you ain't studying the celebrity. We preach Christ. Christ is the deliverer. Christ is the healer. Christ is the peace giver. Christ is the provider. Christ is the liberator. Christ is the victor. In him, the Bible says, uh, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's why we pray in his name. We, 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 we bless our food in his name. How many of y'all, some, some of y'all just jump right on your food, but how many of you bless your food in Jesus' name? When you pray, Jesus told the disciples, you pray, when you pray, you ask the Father in my name, Father God, in the name of Jesus. He preached Christ. Look at verse number six. I got to move. Verse number six says, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those which Philip spake, hearing and seeing uh, the miracles which he did. So it's very critical that our ministry has results because then people will give heed to that which is efficacious and that which is tangible. Let's go to verse number seven. Uh, We're going to move quickly. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And I, I believe God is bringing the church back into deliverance ministry. And we got to know that unclean spirits, have, they manifest, bless you, they manifest. <laughs> Un- unclean spirits manifest. How many of you have ever seen a manifestation of a demon? You know, demons talk. Demons have personality. They can quote scripture. Uh, Demons, I've heard demons say, I own her. Because they really think that. It says they were possessed with many of them. But demons at best are just tenants. Because the Bible says our bodies are the temple. Now, a demon may have snuck in there, but he's in there on borrowed time. He's a renter. He's not an owner. Come on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got a little time to mess with your mind and depress you and frustrate you and, and, and have you doing things that you ought not be doing. But when the name comes, oh, by. Hallelujah. We, we, we are people of the name. We're a church of the name. And, y'all, we don't have to yell at demons. And when you got faith, you can just talk to them and say, in the name of Jesus, come out, come out of her. Come. And then if you're operating in deliverance, and deliverance is when you're casting out spirits, you need a prophetic grace and you need the spirit of discernment so that you can get to the root because sometimes you're calling something out but it's something else. You're calling out anger, and it's really uh, the spirit of molestation that got on that person. You, you get to the root of the thing, and that's why we have to really get deep in God so we know how to, to, to guide people through deliverance ministry. All right? They said it came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, sickness, and that were lame were healed. Now, verse number eight says, and there was great joy in that city. You you do know that when deliverance comes, joy accompanies deliverance. You know, we have a lot of people in church today that dance, but they don't have joy. See, a a, a dance is supposed to be an expression of joy. It's supposed to represent that the devil had me bound, but I got delivered. That's why I don't always dance. If I'm in a season of war, I don't, I'm, I don't have a dance. I don't have a dance. When you see me dance, that means I done came out. I done got the victory. I triumph over what was trying to destroy me. Uh, and it says the great joy was in that city, not just in the church. Isn't it awesome that the church was impacting the city? 
Let's look at verse number nine, guys. Uh, it says, but there was a certain man called Simon, uh, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. And so we do know that sorcery started way back in these days, right? Y'all, y'all do know that that's some of the origin of why Birmingham is called the magic city. Uh, because there's a lot of witches in Birmingham. There's a lot of sorcerers in Birmingham. There are a lot of spell casters in Birmingham. And you have to know that because some of you may be living by them. And if you go in these people's houses, you'll find all kind of stuff uh, where they are uh, doing all kinds. You ever went to New Orleans? You ever go to a certain city and you feel a certain type of thing? And, and you know, it's something going on in this city. You say, I'm going to have to stay in my room the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to go out. Hey, sometimes, y'all, I go in my hotel room. I break my oil out my bag. I had my oil uh, uh, with me in Chicago. Yes, I did. When I got my bag out of, out of uh, the baggage claim, I checked, make sure it didn't leak in my bag. But it, it didn't leak. And I used it when I got to the, uh, uh, to, the, to the city because you got to be covered wherever you go. I wish I had the right church, boy. I'd really talk this a little bit. Take your oil with you. I believe I got two folk in here. I can look at y'all. Y'all some oil carriers up in here. You anoint yourself before you go into a job interview. I can see you. You anoint yourself before you go apply for that car. Come on here. And, and some of y'all, y'all know how when you get the car, you anointed it in oil. When you get the apartment, as soon as you move in, walk through there. Because you don't know who was in there before you. But if you put oil up in there. They, they might have been playing with a Ouija board before we got up in here. But when I put the oil up in here, every spirit that's been lingering got to get up out of here. Whoa, Tobo, shot. Whoa, my shit cool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to have oil on us. And let me tell you something. You ought to tell your neighbor, you've got power. And let me just tell you something. With that power, take your oil and lay hands on your The Bible says in Mark 16, and these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name, they shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say the sick had to be somebody else. Sometimes if you're sick, you need to anoint yourself and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my body to be made whole. Your body will be made whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But it says they were bewitched. Simon thought he was somebody. And, and, and he was giving out that himself was some great one. Y'all, some people come with a lot of fluff. I'm great. I'm awesome. Don't you get impressed by folks because they got their little chest out. Come on. Verse number 10. To whom they all gave heed. Sometimes people are so simple. But you have to be discerning and wise. Because when you are really somebody, you won't have to announce it. It says, from the least to the greatest. That means from those that were poor and, and, and those that were of a common life to those that were in power. Saying, this man is the great power of God. Now, look at verse number 11. I got to go. And to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So the devil does have um, some power. And I do need you to know this, that there are those who can do miraculous things with demonic powers. Right? Uh, but they are delegated and they are always under the auspices of God. Now, this is what you got to remember. It's all scripted uh, throughout Scripture. Y'all remember when Aaron and Moses went before Pharaoh and they had their rods? And, and, and Aaron said, uh, Moses, because, you know, Moses, was, he would, he would uh, uh, stutter like the pig off the cartoon. Wasn't it a pig or something? That's the porcupine. What, what was his name? Porky. Porky. <laughs> 
I didn't know you watched TV, Mom. I know you've been saved all your life. But <laughs> y'all remember how he used to stutter? So Moses stuttered, but he had a spokesman by the name of Aaron. So Aaron spoke to Pharaoh. He said, the Lord said, let his people go. And Pharaoh said, I ain't letting nobody go around here. And, and um, Moses said, he looked at Aaron. He said, show him what we can do. <laughs> and they threw the rod down that Aaron had. The rod became a snake. And uh, Pharaoh said, oh, you think that's something? He went and got his magicians. And, they, he, and Pharaoh said, show them what we can do. Because, you know, the enemy will do that. Try to outshine the people of God. And they cast those rods down, y'all. And, and the Bible says all their rods became snakes. But there was a problem because they, while they were all crawling around, Aaron's rods started crawling toward their rods and started eating them up one by one until there was no more rods left. The anointing always makes the difference. Oh, I feel Jesus right now. You know, that's why you could take two singers, one sing with a bunch of runs, like me with a bunch of runs, because I could do that. You know, I'm one of the best in the city, you know, but I ain't going to do it tonight because I don't want to make nobody feel bad about you again. But you could take one that can't run at all, but they'll tear the whole place up. Because you're doing all that, and it's impressive, but it ain't impactful. It makes us ooh and ah, but it don't make us repent. Come on. It makes us ooh and ah, but it don't change our heart towards our spouse. It makes us ooh and ah, but it don't break and destroy. No, I wish I had somebody want to talk. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'd rather be anointed. So he had sorceries and, oh, okay, I got to go, y'all. Verse 12, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. So here it is. Simon was impressive, but there was something different about Philip. And when they heard Philip, they were like, this guy, is, this is something better. And, and they believed concerning the kingdom and the name of Jesus Christ, and they were baptized Baptism is still relevant. It is, it is what we all must do, both men and women. And then verse number 13, it says, then Simon himself believed also. Now look at here. Philip was so anointed, he converted the manipulator. The one that was bragging about who he was and trying to put off that he was someone special, the Holy Ghost in Philip converted the one that was running the game. And the Bible says that when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered. Now, now what we're going to find about uh, Simon, I'm going to let you go, is that even sometimes when it is that you get saved, you've got to come all, you got to keep your foot on the gas. Because if you don't, some of the residue of who you used to be can follow you into who you're becoming, and it will affect what you're trying to achieve in God. You know, I, you know have you ever noticed, like, some, some leaders, some leaders in the church that were uh, running a money scheme in the world, they brought it over to the church? You just played it on another field. So you got to make sure you get all that old stuff out of you. <laughs> you know, get it all out. No residue. I want to hear the people talking here that will say, I want all of the old me gone. I don't want it to mess up anything that God's setting up for me. All right? So it says, Simon himself believed, he was baptized, he continued with Philip, and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done, all right? And now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. They sent help so now the people can be discipled. They've been delivered, now they need to be discipled. All right, verse number 15, who when they were come down, prayed for them. Watch this. The people have believed, but they still need to receive the Holy Ghost. 
Because you, you do know that you don't receive, that believing and receiving the Holy Ghost don't always happen at the same time. Like uh, people begin to believe in Jesus, but belief is not where you should stop. You got to keep on going till you get the Holy Ghost on the inside until you're speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And now the fruit of the Spirit is beginning to manifest itself in your life. I feel like talking up in here tonight. It, it says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them. He, meaning the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is a person. For he, and the, and the person is Jesus, all right? For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is why a lot of people, they get baptized and they go back to the club. They get baptized and they go back to sleeping around. They get baptized and they go back to drinking and cussing and smoking. Don't you leave out of here right now. I come to tell somebody, after you come out the water... You need to receive the fire of God because the Holy Ghost is what helps us to live holy because there is no good thing that lieth in our flesh. Hallelujah. And in order for that to happen, we've got to stay humble. We've got to remain humble. Don't let anybody rush you into preaching too quick. Don't let anyone rush you into ministry too quick. Make sure that your goal is to get full of the Holy Ghost. I'm not trying to get a mic. I want the Holy Ghost. I don't need a title. I want the Holy Ghost. Everything else will happen organically. Give me the power that rose Christ from the dead. Somebody ought to shout, give me the Holy Ghost. Give me, give me the Holy Ghost. If they never call me to preach again, I, I want to speak in tongues under the fire every single day. They never say that I'm someone great. That's not the goal. The goal is not to have your name in lights. The goal is to have power with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they don't ever let me lead a song in the choir, just give me the Holy Ghost. Oh, I got a good church in here tonight. If they never give me preferential seats, just give me the Holy Ghost. If they never acknowledge my presence, I just want his presence. Just if I never become a millionaire, just give me the Holy Ghost. Because there are rich people in hell and there are poor people in heaven. Case in point, money don't make you. You need something that's going to get you out of the grave when that trumpet sounds. The Bible says that if we don't have that spirit that quickened and raised Christ from the dead, we are none of his. That's what Romans 8 says. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I got two folk that want to have church tonight. Anybody glad you got him on the inside? Oh, money may be tight, but you got him on the inside. Stuff may be strained, but you got God on the inside. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there. Oh, God. Hallelujah. It's such a comforting feeling. Verse number 18, and I'm going to let you go. I got to get out of here. I feel Jesus. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, look what he did. He offered them money. So here it is now. He's a believer. He's come into the faith, but he still got that scheme in spirit. He was like, yo, y'all giving this thing out with the laying on of hands, that's another, that's another way for me to make money, bro. Give me the gift. I'll inv it's a business decision. He says, let me invest up front. You give me the gift, and I'll make sure I make my money back because I'll start giving it out and charging people in order for me to, like, folks, uh, up at, at 12 o'clock at night, if you want a healing, I've got healing water. Send me a thousand dollars and I'll send you the healing water. 
and you don't know the clown that went in his sink and gave you some faucet water. Send that in the mail. And you're drinking it with your crazy self, talking about, oh, I feel God. You go to the doctor and say, and they tell you your high blood pressure is higher than it's ever been. You done mess around here and got another issue going on. Your oxygen levels are low. <laughs> Talk about you got some miracle water. You ain't got no miracle water. That's why we got to stay away from that crazy stuff. Stick with the word. Young man told me one time, met me for lunch. He said, Bishop Woods, I want to talk to you. He said, I want you to tell me how to get power. He said, I want the kind of power where I can take my jacket and throw it and folk fall out. And I'm looking at my watch thinking, I'm a very busy man. You went through trouble to book me, and we're at one of my least favorite restaurants, and you asking me this? I gave him a real good answer. I said, this is what you do. I'll tell you how to get it. You ready for this? I said, first of all, are you a member of a local church? Well, you know, God's... No, 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 no. I need to know if you're a member of a local church because you need to go and join a church. And when you join a church, I said, first thing you need to do after you join the church, be there when the doors are open. And then join the ushers. Because everybody in Scripture started from the bottom. Today, man, we, we've got people that come in. I'm anointed. You got anybody over your prophetic ministry? Yes. It's called Casper. And we're not filling his spot anytime soon. Because folk like that, as soon as their feelings get hurt, they're going to act a fool. And your fruit is what matters. You prancing around on stage is not impressive. It's what kind of person are you? Standing all over the room. My time is, I'm six minutes over time. We'll start at verse number 19 on next week. The Lord say the same. Listen, if you need special prayer, run down here really quick to the altar. I want to pray a prayer for all of you great people of God that need prayer. That's it, come on, from wherever you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. We know where the power is. We know where the power is. It's in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's raise that up, everybody. We know where the power is. We know where the power is. Everybody say, it's in the name of Jesus. We know, come on, help me. We know where the power is. We know. I want to encourage all of you that have come down to this altar tonight that your needs are met, that the Spirit of God is with you. Don't worry about a thing. God is going to help you in this season. God is going to reveal himself to you in this season. And you shall see the glory of the Lord like never before. Ayadaboho. And with your hands lifted, I want to pray, Father God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for these great people of God that have come to this altar. They've come needing you, God. You, you know the need. You know the challenge. You, you know the pressure. You know the, the weights. You know everything, God. You're omniscient. And God, I kindly ask you tonight that you release your power on each and every one of them in the name of Jesus send help where they need help 
send resources where they need resources. Lord God, touch their minds. Touch their hearts tonight. And I pray, Father, that your presence will be made tangible in their lives. I pray, God, hallelujah, that you would fill every empty space. And I ask you tonight kindly that you would send a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, on this altar right now, come Holy Ghost. Do what you do. Destroy every yoke. Break every chain. Lift every burden. Oh God, lift the heaviness. Lift the heaviness. And na, 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 yeah. I thank you right now that your glory is being revealed. I thank you right now that Satan has already been defeated. Oh God, and that their minds are clearing up. That their hearts, Lord God, are being made whole. I thank you, Lord God, that resources are coming to them. Lord, ways are being made. Doors are opening right now. Lord, I thank you that you're giving them strategy, that you're giving them money, and you're giving them power. I thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you, and the Lord rebuke it. And God, I thank you right now that no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against these great people will be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. For their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And it's already done. And we praise you and we glorify you for the breakthrough. Come on, we open our mouths and we give you glory right now. We thank you that heaven is opening up and the glory of God is being revealed. Come on, let the devil hear your shout. I know you may be tired, but let the enemy hear your shout. I know you may be discouraged, but let the enemy hear your shout. Oh, no more shake, come on, my, my, my. Oh, God, I praise you. Oh, God, I honor you. And I speak that it's already done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hey, I feel a shift. In Jesus' name. In
breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. There's a deliverance. Oh yeah, Satan has been overthrown. His time is up. His scheme has been broken. And the glory of the Lord is being revealed in the Nanaki Sotoboho. Oh yes, Lord. The power of God is being released in this place. We shall see the glory of God. We shall see the glory of God. Miracles, 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 miracles. Hey, hey, woo! Come on, so come on, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. is coming down every high place is coming down the stronghold I cast down the imaginations I cast down and the glory and the glory and the glory of the Lord and the glory of the Lord and the glory of the Lord Oh, 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 oh,
tonight he's saying tell my people I need them to renew their yes I need 50 people to lift your hands and say yes Lord Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We tell him yes. 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 Lord, we bless you. As we get ready to leave this place. Andre Usa Rababa Orande Ishianaba Kolalamako City de la Devosa. Healing is taking place. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God. Lift it up. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down. The burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary, God. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Everybody come lay down, come lay down. The burdens you have carried for in the same Yes, Lord. The glory of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Yes, Lord. Come lay it 
down the burdens you have carried for innocent Joel. Oh, yeah, God. Ah. Welcome, welcome. Welcome into this place. Come on, let's give God glory for the word of the Lord. I feel the spirit. I want you to know this is just the spirit of the Lord moving. I don't want anyone to be intimidated by it. It's, it's God. This is a safe space. It's a safe space. People are getting what they need. If you, 
If you're looking for membership tonight and you want to join the church, whether you're online or on site, I know some are still with us, I want you to come. I'd, I'd love to welcome you as a member of this church. If you're here, don't wait till Sunday. Tonight is your night. Come on from wherever you are. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on home. Come on. Come on, come on. Oh, we've got a brother coming. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes, Lord. Yeah, mama, ma, shanda, yada, da, ma, Come on, who else is going to come join with him? I know there are about three more people here tonight. You need to come. You're here because you need a church home. I want you to know you found the place you've been praying about and looking for. Will you come from wherever you are? I'll give you space tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad to have this young man uh, come home. I know you prayed about this. I know you've been thinking about it. And you are obeying God. And I am so excited to serve you as your bishop. And I want to say for my wife and myself and our church, welcome to be a member of All Nations Church, to do all that God has called you to do, to be all he's called you to be. Everybody help Bishop shout, welcome home. I love you, man. Our Sister Perry is going to get you, take you to the back just to get some information from you. And I can't wait to meet and us to get together. I love you, man. Welcome home. God bless you. Listen, God is so good. God is so good. Well, I was trying to have you out by eight, but the Holy Ghost interrupted the service. And it, it just happens like that sometimes. But I love y'all so much. And I'm praying for you that God will continue to blow your mind the rest of this week. Right hand to God. Now may the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. Let's all say amen. 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 All kids must be picked up from the fellowship hall. And that's downstairs. All kids must be picked up from the fellowship hall. Are you?